cultivation of octopus. Octopus fishing is an age-old tradition along the coast of Galicia, in the northwestern part of Spain. In Mediterranean Asian countries, the octopus is a species in great demand and one whose price seems to be steadily on the increase. These gamelas, small Galician fishing boats, still fish for this cephalopod, following the old traditional fishing customs. If we had to make a list of the tastiest, most exquisite dishes consumed in Galicia, octopus would undoubtedly be at the top of the list. Its simple preparation rooted in traditional Galician fares makes it a dish worthy of even the most discriminating palate. In 1995, at its center in Vigo, the Spanish Institute of Oceanography undertook a project to investigate the feasibility of cultivating octopus throughout its entire cycle. In spite of being territorial creatures, the octopus can adapt perfectly to placement in tanks of 25 cubic meters with an open water system. They admitted stocking densities of approximately 10 kilograms per cubic meter. Although problems of cannibalism arose when specimens of very different sizes were mixed together in the same tank. Having taken into account the tendency these animals have to hide in natural cavities, we found it important to place some sort of artificial dwellings in the cultivation tank. In 10 months of captivity under these conditions of cultivation, a mortality rate of below 10% was registered. From studies carried out in its natural environment, it is estimated that the lifespan of the common octopus is two years for females and about three years for males. In their natural environment, octopus feed principally on crustaceans, fish and other cephalopods. In captivity, we have used frozen crabs of little commercial value, Carcinus minus and Polybius henslowi, which are quite abundant along our coasts. With this diet, octopus of 500 grams can reach a commercial size of two to three kilos in four months. The maximum weight reached was 12 kilos after 10 months. The spawning period begins in spring and lasts until the end of the autumn. Males mature from a weight of 200 grams onwards and females from 500 grams on. Light is the environmental factor that most heavily influences the rate of sexual maturity. These animals display sexual dimorphism. The third right arm of the males, the hectocotylus, is shorter than its homologue. It is this arm that is used by the males for copulation. Fertilization is internal. The male introduces the hectocotylus into the mantle cavity of the female and deposits the spermatophores. A male can copulate with various females and the females can also be receptive to different males. In our experimental work, we have noted that all the females kept in captivity reach maturity. Their weights, when they began to spawn, varied between one and eight kilos. The eggs were laid in the dwellings made of diverse material and occasionally on the walls of the tanks. A single female can produce between 100,000 and 500,000 eggs, depending on her size. The eggs are spawned in clusters. Various weeks can pass between the spawning of the first cluster and that of the last.
during this entire period, the female does not feed. Once the final paralarvae are born, she dies within a few days. The female is the one in charge of the care of the eggs. She devotes herself exclusively to the cleaning of the clusters and the renovation of the water that surrounds them, at the same time protecting them from the intrusion of possible enemies. <laughs>